The quail was amazing, and I know the cheese is perfect, but there are still four more courses that I haven't tried yet, and nine different Lost Abbey beers to drink with them. I feel like a kid in a candy store, and I know I'm in for one world-class meal. Uh, this is one of those things that we look forward to every year, and we're here tonight uh, to celebrate what's possible, and what's possible is sort of uh, the combination of food and beer, and what sort of the beer can do for the food and what the food can do for the beer. And it's a great opportunity for us to showcase some of our beers that don't normally make it out this way. So when you look at the list tonight, you'll see some incredible, uh, some new beers, some incredible old beers, and just some things that we think really, really work with Tom's kitchen and the things that they're doing here. Let me tell you, this blows me away. I'm learning more than I ever thought I would about how you can really complement and meld flavors together. There's a little cherry in the sauce on the pate. Draws out the cherry flavor. The acidity of the uh, red poppy really cuts through the fattiness of the pate. Unbelievable. And this is just a starter. This is going to be a good night. <laughs> you know, again, I'm not, I'm not a particularly big tartare guy. Uh, but I've got to say that I don't know, maybe I'm just in the mood, but this is really good. The fattiness of the salmon is, uh, is really cut well by the beer. And this thing, it's like, it's like eating a chunk of wasabi about that big with each bite. My friend Amy over here ate the cracker in one fell swoop. We thought we were going to have to call 911. Did you think you'd be bleeding or something? <laughs> this is Frambois de Amorosa. Um, and an Amorosa is a wanton woman, so you can kind of figure out what that means. It's going to make for some really interesting artwork, I can tell you that. Super excited that they're pairing it with quail this evening. Um, I think that's going to be an awesome pairing. Um, this is a batch of beer that we're talking about coming out that we're probably looking at case totals, about 300 cases, and all of this will be sold at the brewery. So this will not be something that would make it to this market. This will be one of the only chances that you probably would get to taste this beer um, on draft. Wow, that's tart, but man, it's good. It just bang. I think I saw that movie, The Search for the Holy Quail. The quail is mild. The merguez sausage has this, uh, you know, just. Not heat, but spice quality to it that really works well. And, and again, the sweetness of the reduction just worked perfectly. This is one of our five year-round beers that we make. So this is a very uh, very traditional monastic abbey style beer, about 8% eight, 8 alcohol. It's actually got raisins in the beer itself. So these are both raisin-based beers. And this is the one that we really talk about in the food side of things as being um, way more food driven. This is, um, the, the raisins in this beer are actually, they're blackened. We actually um, caramelized the sugars on the raisins with a blowtorch and a creme brulee like. We literally take a flame to them and char them, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Uh, there's we also- blowtorch the raisins. We let everybody blowtorch the raisins because it's a lot of fun. And you can see, obviously, the difference in the two of them. Uh, there's also honey and rosemary in it, so it's it's a very food-driven beer. That That's what I got was, I mean, before, just as you were saying that, I put it up in uh, my nose and I got the honey part. Rosemary's a little more, uh, you have to you have to give it some time to get that. We love to get this beer in front of chefs because I think there's so much, um, so many layers that they can work around. Let's see if you can tell when all that beer started kicking in. You drink enough of this and you will violate a su substantial number of the Ten Commandments. I think more so than anything tonight, even though Tom didn't actually cook the cheese, uh, this was probably the one course I really wanted to, to come into this building and do. The pink beer is actually the Veritas 007. The second beer, the, 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 the more port-like beer, is actually our Angel Share Grand Cru. This is, I think, one of the, the most interesting beers that we've ever done in the sense that it has a lot of old world uh, techniques of, of new beer and old beer at the same time we've brought the fruit into the mix as well. These are two beers um, which you're not likely to see in this market at all. It's interesting, the common theme that I've noted that's running through Mr. Arthur's speeches tonight is <laughs> we're only making 40 cases of this and you can't have any. Yeah. Quite stingy in my opinion, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's really good stuff. I think those people would say, you know, that you know, you're, you're quite lucky you got a seat at the table, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> too 
Okay. <laughs> Here comes dessert, a molten chocolate cake. It's not completely baked through, leaving a pudding-like center, and paired with a cuvee, made for one perfect ending. This is a plate liquor, definitely a plate liquor. I hope you enjoyed what we did. These guys worked really hard over the last couple days, so uh, I think they did a great job. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Great time. Thank you. Alan, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.